Well, good morning, everyone. I'm going to do my little thing. Okay, begin again. Sorry, I've been having problems this morning. At first, I forgot to share my screen, and then I paused myself, and I never unpaused myself. So I listened to half of this episode without you guys. So now I have to go back and listen to it again so you can hear about Jay. And he failed a drug test and he lost his CDL because of it. So let's listen to him talk about how a mistake totally derailed his plan for his life. All right, Kat, pardon me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to knock you down, but you got to give me some space. I'm a mean cat person. I'm <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. All right, let's, let's get to this. Um, Am I unmuted? Okay. What? What am I doing here? I'm all discombobulated. All right. Try this again. And maybe I'll let you guys listen to this without me because I got to start getting my lunch ready for work and everything. there and welcome to Accountability Nation as presented by I'm Only Human, the podcast that attempts to explain how to coexist with other humans. Self-accountability is something that will change our world. This podcast strain is Jay's project. We may stay focused on the original topic or we may drift way off course. Either way, it will be an adventure. Before we begin, we would like to state that we are not experts and we don't claim to be. We will, however, be talking about a lot of heated topics and some mellow things. It all leads back to taking accountability for your own actions, whether good or bad. Through recovery, healing is possible. We believe that change minds and attitudes can change our world. Go for it. And welcome back to the I Am Only Human podcast. I'm Jason. This is Jenny. And we're here to talk about accountability today. And... This comes from my personal life. This is part of recovery for me. Um, This week, I had started working a job in the transportation industry. I'm a commercial driver. Well, I was a commercial driver. And this is right after you got that gas station job, correct? Right. Okay. I I took the gas station job to um, just to get some money rolling and make ends meet till I I could uh, I could get myself DOT cleared again. Uh, because of the injuries and whatever else, I wasn't DOT cleared. So needless to say, the week before I go to test, I I take a gout medication that I'm not prescribed. So key phrase, I was not prescribed this medication. And it ultimately turned out to be an opiate. And it was a banned substance uh, for the Department of Transportation. And because of that, I failed my drug test. And because of that, I lost my career. I lost my CDL. And to get my CDL back, I have to go through an evaluation program and I have to complete whatever it is. Um, they, they recommend um, to get myself back into the, the possibility of using a, a, my CDL again. And I have to take accountability for that because I made the mistake of taking a medication that I didn't know what exactly it was. I just know I have gout and I know that I had access to a medication that helps with gout. That was not my medication. So because of that, I really torpedoed my career and I left scrambling to find something new and it's going to be in a new field because I don't have the ability to drive professionally uh, as I did previously. So these are things that can happen. What seems like an innocent mistake uh, turns out to be something a lot more. And yeah, right.
Friday, I was absolutely devastated. And I had a lot of apologies to make to people for, for letting them down. The people that hired me specifically, the person that trained me the whole week, I had to apologize to them for, for making this mistake, not even thinking anything of it. Like a simple medication turned out to be not a simple medication. And it's very frustrating because that stuff's still sitting in my system and will probably be in my system for another few weeks. So on top of it, any job that I go to look at, I, I now have to have this medication out of my system before I can drug test because I'll fail multiple drug tests till that's gone. And I, I, I can't allow that to happen either. So I'm left in limbo with no career, no income, and right now minimal prospects till I can obtain a clean personal sample. I mean, alcoholics, they work. They're functional alcoholics, and nobody seems to say anything about that, but smoke a joint on a weekend and get randomly drug tested, and you're out of a job. I mean, I just think that we need to look at things a little more clearly rather than you did this, so the, there's only this consequence. There's there's gray area in there, and people need to realize that. And a lot of this comes down to just regulation. This program is a cash grab, no doubt. But at the same token, looking at it, it there's a safety risk, obviously, with the fact that I have something in my system that I'm not prescribed. It looks negatively upon my behavior into the Department of Transportation. It's black and white. You failed, you're out. And it's like, I get that in, in a lot of senses, but in the same senses, you have people that are drinking the whole night away, wake up the next morning, hungover, not at their best, and they jump behind the wheel because their blood alcohol level is acceptable to DOT standards. And that's a real issue for people who are functional alcoholics, they're, they're able to get away with so much more because their prohibition is done. I'm not a pill user. I've never been a pill user. Quite honestly, I don't like opiates. And I should have suspected something the first time I took the medication months and months ago when I felt a little, a little lightheaded and dizzy. And I didn't think anything of it. I'm like, oh, this just must be the side effects of the medication, not putting two and two together that this medication is potentially a risk. And those are the life lessons that, that we learn. And rather than mentally spiraling out of control, uh, ultimately what, what happened is I decided that I need to do things that are not going to be self-destructive over this weekend. And after I came back to my girlfriend's place, the first thing I did is I took a nap and I just, I let it go away a little bit. And then after I took my nap, I went and I hit the gym, positive influence on my life, uh, making a better choice. And that night I made sure that I had a reasonably good dinner. I had chicken and vegetables and a few snacks, nothing out of control, nothing where I ate myself into sickness or anything, which is something that I would be prone to do if uh, I were in a worse mindset. Most importantly, I didn't relapse into any other bad habits. So uh, I was able to stay strong, even though I, I basically just screwed up to the point that I'm not sure what I'm going to do next. Uh, I just didn't make it worse. And I think that on building better habits and building a better relationship spiritually and recovery. Right. So with this accountability thing, have you noticed that anywhere else in your life? Like before you became accountable for what you did, you would just eat yourself into oblivion or go drink. And that was your go-to. Well, yeah, a lot of it came down to this. When, when you're not accountable to yourself, you allow yourself to do things that you know are wrong but yet you figure out ways to justify them. It's like, well, yeah, that happened, but that's not really my fault. So I guess I'll just go get drunk and, and wipe it all away. And then you've just created yourself two problems. Or it's like, well, I guess I'll go hit the buffet and get myself so full that I'm sick and dealing with that because this wasn't my fault. It's like, 
they should have done this or they should allow me to do this. No, the reality is this. I should have known better. And because I should have known better, I, I should have handled myself differently. And that's the difference between playing the victim and being accountable for your actions. I'm going to spring this on you just because it popped up in my head. And it's another controversial topic, and that's the race card. And that all comes down to accountability, too. So what do you think of people who play the race card all the time? Like these crap employees can't be fired somehow because of the color of their skin. Or they're hiring people that are not qualified to do certain jobs because they have to have a quota of this color of person or that ethnic background. So what do you think about the race card? Well, this is the way I look at it. Um, you got to do what's right for you. And racism wouldn't exist in this world if somebody wasn't profiting off it. There's several groups of people that profit off this. There's several politicians that profit off this. And there's the elites of this world that profit off of keeping us divided by things that are out of our control, like the color of our skin the gender of our body, the mentality that we have. Uh, people have been dividing us our whole lives and telling us that the color of our skin is wrong and that there's nothing we can do about it. The fact that we're a man or a woman is wrong. There's nothing we can do about it. Well, the reality is self-accountability erases the race card. It erases the gender card. It erases the victimhood mentality. And it erases a lot of poor judgment um, that happens in your life. Being accountable for who you are and your actions takes away a lot of the labeled nonsense, as I like to call it. We have a culture built on people using things to their advantage and other people allowing people to use those things to their advantage, like the race card, the victimhood card, the sexuality card. These are all things that People well above us have figured out, hey, we're gonna we're gonna introduce these things. People are gonna eat it up because by nature, we are very emotional creatures. By nature, those people using those things are not. They're very manipulative, they're very focused, they're greedy individuals, and they seek two things. They seek power and resources, and they know how to get them. And I've noticed that those things don't make these people happy either. Because they just, they seek more of the same thing. You can't keep going back to the same well for something different. It's just never going to change. Sometimes you got to think outside the box. That's why I want to get people to think outside the programming, outside what we've been conditioned to believe from the Bible, from biblical times. We've been conditioned to think this way. And I've been digging into Genesis more and it's fascinating. I'm going to reveal more, but I have to get it all typed out first so I don't sound like a complete moron. Well. Yeah. That's the thing, like, organized religion has always been about controlling the population. Governments have always been about controlling the population. We'll allow you to do this and think that you have these rights as long as you're not paying attention to us extracting your resources from you, extracting your wealth, and, and passing arbitrary laws that take away your freedoms. And, and people don't look at that. We are all have within us the ability to self-govern people have been telling us our whole lives that no leave that to us you're not smart enough to do that and that's just factually inaccurate anybody that tells you you're lesser than someone else because of some arbitrary factor out of your control is only trying to use you as a as a tool to get themselves more resources and uh more wealth more power we had touched a little bit on this in another podcast we did earlier about like starting a revolution that begins with our ourselves within ourselves. And that's how we're going to change the world. I just hope that enough people listen to this and they actually hear, understand and think about what we're saying rather than, oh, these two people, they don't know what they're talking about and blah, blah, blah. And that's never going to work. It's the fear. It's the fear of change that keeps people from changing. Oh, it absolutely is. And I've opted out of our culture. I, I'm in favor of building my own personal culture built on self-accountability, built on my principles, built on my morals, and built on being a better person and treating other people better. 
I don't look at people and go, well, you know, I need to treat you this way because you look like this or you act like this. I, I don't prescribe to that. I don't prescribe to labels. Labels are the lazy person's way at justifying shitty behavior to others. It's as simple as that. And using instant phobe names are nothing more than a distractionary tactic for somebody who doesn't have a valid response to something that was said to them. And it's all cultural decay. And I don't want to live in a culture that's full of decaying um, ideas and principles based on what somebody else wants everyone else to do. I personally want to build a culture of accountability and I want to build a nation of people that feel the same way. That's why accountability nation exists. It's a nation of people that believe in self accountability and they have opted out of the nonsense culture of fighting for their letter or fighting for their group only to figure out that they're really just fighting to make someone else rich. I don't want to enrich anyone else. I'm not even trying to enrich myself. I want to make enough money in life to get by and live comfortably. But outside of that, I'm not trying to extract resources from anyone else because I want to see everyone else succeed as much as I succeed. And I believe that we all have the ability to do that under the right, uh, under the right conditions. In closing, we would like to say that the opinions expressed here were strictly of our own making or by some guests. Take what you like and leave the rest. You may come to realize that you may not like us or what we want to share, but let's talk to each other, reason things out, but let there be no gossip or criticism of one another. Instead, let the fellowship of ethical human behavior and the serenity from positive human interaction help you grow and chill out one experience at a time. We would like to thank our higher powers for guiding us through this podcast. We hope to spread the message of love, hope, and understanding by touching one life at a time. If you like this podcast, please like and share it. Comments also help other struggling people find it. We are now listener supported, and if you would like to contribute, please feel free. There is no obligation. If you would like to share feedback, you can email Jen at averagehumanbeing1875 at gmail.com or visit Jay on Twitter at Earbuds Music. There is also a link you can click if you would like to send a voice message and add to the content of the show. Okay, so I finally got through that episode. Let's see what's coming up next. What's coming up? Oh, I don't want to have to go through all the Look at all these episodes. There's going to be a whole lot of episodes coming up. All right. I don't even know where I am. We'll find out next time where we're at and what we're going to do. Let me stop sharing my screen. Okay, so there you have it. We touched... A little bit on racism and the race card and the workplace and things like we touched on a whole bunch of stuff and join me again next time where it's going to be a surprise what the episode is because I don't remember what it's going to be. So take care. Bye bye. I got to get ready for work. Have a great day.